Uh, I was asked quite a while ago by the Four Horsemen to uh, be a guest horseman on a build, and that's what we're going to be doing today, so don't go away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul, coming to you, as always, from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And boy, it has been spectacular. We woke up to a thunderstorm, and it, it was rainy and thundery all morning. Loved every second of it. So I'm actually in a really, really good mood. And more so because I'm coming to you today as an honorary member of the Four Horsemen. They wanted to do a build. They asked me if I would join them for this particular build. And in this build, we're going to be taking the Hot Wheels Big Air Bel Air, and we've got to do a Gaslands build out of it. This has got some challenges to it, so let's get to work. So for this build with the Four Horsemen, they have chosen the Big Air Bel Air, and the theme is that we have to convert it into a Gaslands type vehicle. Well, here's my problem with that. This thing could could survive Gaslands the way it is. It's it's lifted, it's off-road, it's powerful, the glass is all out of it. It's got roll bars and floodlights and everything. It's ready to rock and roll if you ask me. But that notwithstanding I'm going to come up with something to do with this thing. So, in this video, rather than tell you everything that I'm going to do to this car, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. See, in my Gaslands world, it's not a war or nuclear meltdown or anything like that that brings us to the apocalypse. Much to our chagrin and our surprise, it's zombies. Yep, sure enough, it's zombies. Real life, actual zombies. You know, the living dead, wanting to eat your brains. It's everything we ever put on TV has come to life. So, here we are in a battle for survival against zombies who want, really, nothing more than to eat our brains. Well, the one thing we didn't get right when we wrote all our little fictional stories about zombies is that they're not completely mindless. Whether it's muscle memory or they actually have some activity in their brains, they actually are a little higher functioning than we thought they would be. Now, these zombies can do things like work a door. They can uh, follow a sound. They can actually work a vehicle. Now, they can't repair a vehicle, so if it breaks down, it's it's dead to them. But if, if there are keys in the ignition, they can start this thing up and they can drive it albeit not well, but they can drive it and they can maneuver around and, and they have organized groups within the zombie culture and, and they're actually higher functioning and that becomes a serious, serious problem. Look, on any level, on any level, a zombie is a bad thing. And when you have a, a high-functioning zombie, that is the worst of things, okay? And that's what we have in my apocalyptic world. So instead of representing humans who have set up these rogue squads that roam the planet, I'm going to represent the zombies. So, aside from knowing that they want to eat brains, zombies have figured out that fresh, right out of the skull brains, are infinitely better 
than moldy, splattered onto the sidewalk brains. So the zombies have organized these hunting squads that go around looking and trying to capture living human beings. This way, they're hungry. Instead of having to scoop up a plate of old rotten brains, they're hungry, they go to the pantry, they pull out a human, crack open his skull, slurp some brains. It's delicious. Win, win, win. Okay? So that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to be representing one of these zombie death squads, or whatever you care to name them, that travels around gathering humans to stock up their supply. So I have gotten questions about this stuff before, and it's a sanding screen that they use for sanding down like drywall. And uh, you can buy it at any of the big home stores uh, in the wall section, and it's fantastic stuff. It works great for gas lands things, and if you cut one little thin strip of it, it actually makes a pretty good facsimile of barbed wire. So yeah, it's pretty handy stuff, and uh, like I said, it's cheap and readily available. So, now, look. Just because these zombies have some higher function doesn't mean they're good at anything, okay? When they rig up their cars, they don't know the difference between a truck and a car, okay? So in this case, they're going to take a car and turn it into one of their death wagons. Um, they, they don't care. They're, they're taking a pair of tin snips and cutting the roof off, and they're, they're chopping away at it with hacksaw blades and, and trying to chew through the metal and stuff like that. So they're, they know what they want to get done, they're just not really good at it, okay? But what they want to do is they want a vehicle that will help them get around so when they capture a human, they can put them into it and get them back safely and alive so that they can have the fresh brains. One thing we did get right about zombies is that they are slow-moving and and, and, and although they're higher functioning than we gave them credit for, they're still kind of dim-witted. So having a vehicle is a big advantage for them, and they still know that they need to come at us with numbers. So they they come at you, they surround you, they swarm you, and they capture you, and later on they eat you. Yeah, so um, I had this plan right from the start. As soon as I started to think about the project, this is what came into my mind, and I thought it would be a lot of fun uh, to have a bunch of rowdy zombies out cruising the streets looking for brains like a bunch of teenagers trying to get somebody to buy beer for them, you know? So that's what we've got going on here. Uh, I'm going to use my big air, Bel Air. I'm going to build, build a little zombie-built cage in the back to keep their catch in and wait until you see the little figures that I've got to go with this. They're so fun. I'm really excited about them. Okay, so before you get a chance to see the little figures I'm going to use here up close and personal, who remembers the movie I Am Legend with Will Smith? He's a some kind of military scientist and he's like the last living human on in, in in New York, in on in Manhattan somewhere. I, I don't know. I don't remember remember, but uh um that's what these figures are. It's it's Will Smith, the dog, and uh three zombies. And I, so here's how this went. I, I got online and I started searching 164 scale zombies. Uh, you know, imagine that in your search engine. But I, I did that, and this is what came up, and the, they're really super detailed little figures. They're fantastic. So I, I ordered a set, and frankly, I was getting worried there. 
I ordered these way in advance, and it took a little bit longer than I was hoping it would, and I was worried I was going to have to change up my plan here. Um, but they finally got here. They're fantastic, and they are the foundation of my whole build and my whole idea here is, you know, because in that movie, the zombies were a little bit intelligent, honestly. So um, that that kind of generated the entire concept. So, yeah, you, you may recognize when you get a look inside the little prison box, you may be able to, to recognize uh, Will Smith. So I think that's pretty fun. Okay, so you notice I didn't really bother with any painting or anything like that because well, I don't really need to. This this is zombies, okay? And it's the apocalypse. People aren't driving into Earl Scheib for paint jobs. So after I get this car all built up the way I want it, then I'm going to come through and I'm going to paint it. Now, I had to edit the Will Smith character a lot. He had a, a rifle. I had to cut that out of his hands. He had some big satchel. I had to cut that off. And then I snipped off his legs and angled them so that I could glue them together on his body so he'd be in a sitting position. Um, so after getting them cut off and kind of beveling the edges, I'm just using a little uh, CA glue and some accelerator to glue his legs back on and put him in a sitting pose to fit inside the cage. This may be the dumbest thing you're going to hear this year. Um, I didn't use the dog because I didn't know what, to, I didn't want to turn the dog into a zombie and I didn't want the zombies to eat the dog. Um, even though it's just a little plastic dog, I, I couldn't do it. So I have the dog left. So <laughs> I, I just, I couldn't do it. I, I love dogs and I, I would not uh, subject one to this torment of being a zombie dog. So now why did the zombies paint their vehicle? Well, I'll tell you why. Because they do have some kind of sense of what's going on. And humans are fighting back, of course. And so they want to be able to identify their own people easily. So when these death squads go out to go capture humans, they want to be able to recognize uh, their death squads when they're coming back with their catch. So they slathered on some zombie-esque colors of lime green and yellow onto the car. And I think we're just about done with this thing. So after a little bit of paint, a little bit of a dusting up on the wheels and tires and, and whatnot. And I'm going to call this one done. I want to say thank you to the Four Horsemen for inviting me to be an honorary horseman this month. <clears throat> this build was a lot of fun. I still get a giggle out of, out of it every time I look at it because these zombies look like they're just having the greatest time driving around in their, their ridiculous little death wagon. Um, it, it's just... It was a lot of fun for me. So again, thank you for Horsemen. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's take a look at my zombie death car. Okay, you can call it what you want. You can call it my zombie party wagon or my zombie death squad wagon or uh, whatever you want to come up with. But I'll tell you what, these zombies look like they're having one hell of a good time, okay? And they have got a cool car to go with it, so it's all good. Um, that was a lot of fun, uh, especially, you know, twisting things around a little bit like that. I really enjoyed it. And it was such an honor to be asked to be an honorary four horseman for this build. So 
Uh, thank you to the Four Horsemen for inviting me. I really had a great time, and I hope I did you proud. If you like this video, please give it a giant thumbs up, click subscribe, and don't forget to squash the notification bell like a zombie squashing a plate of brains so you never miss one of my videos. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Until next time, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. This is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying, be good.